Netflix is putting out some great content lately, and today I'm going to focus my spiritual interpretation lens on one film that came out in January 2019. Hey, check me out actually talking about a super recent movie. Let's look into the deeper meaning of what I think is a great sci-fi drama, Io. Hello, Spiritual Seekers! I am your wonderful host, Mark, and welcome to yet another Examining the Spiritual Elements of Movies episode of Think Spiritual Podcasts. Okay, Examining the Spiritual Elements, or should I start calling it Mythology and Movies? I've rechristened the YouTube channel as Movies and Mythology, so I don't know, I just keep thinking that the word spiritual is scaring people away from my subject matter, so I'm having some issues with my branding. Please tell me your thoughts on the matter. Now, mythology and movies makes much more sense today as I will be taking a look at a new Netflix film, Io, which is a movie that very emphatically uses mythology to not only tell its story, but also to create its own mythology. Io is the story of a young woman named Sam, who is one of the last people living on Earth as the planet will no longer support oxygen breathers. She and the last few stragglers are supposed to be heading for shuttles that will take them to a massive space station that is orbiting Jupiter's moon Io. Sam, however, feels like she can't leave the planet that humanity has called home since our species first developed language. Now, if you haven't seen the movie yet, then please go watch it or I very well may spoil the ending for you, if you care about that kind of thing. I never seem to worry about knowing how a movie ends. I always care more about how a film progresses towards that ending. But in Hero's Journey terms, this movie really caught me off guard. The first time I watched it, I was quite certain that I was watching a tragedy. I'm not sure if I've ever brought it up before, but a tragedy is a story where the potential hero or some primary character completely refuses the call to adventure. They are roadblocked at step two of the journey. And that's what I thought was happening with Margaret Qualley's ca character, Sam, as she continually refused to do what everyone asked her to do, leave Earth. It was near the end of the movie that I began to realize that the special world wasn't Io, but it was the new atmosphere of Earth, and that Sam's true hero's journey was to stay on Earth. She wasn't supposed to give in to the pressure of leaving. She was supposed to stay, and mythologically speaking, give birth to God's children. Sam was the embodiment of the Io of mythology, the mortal lover of Zeus and the mother of Hercules. So when I watched the movie a second time, it was with the knowledge of what Sam's true hero's journey was, and during that second watching, I really connected with her and truly empathized with her deep struggle to stay true to her calling. That raw need in Sam to see the old mythology display at the Museum of History was the huge apotheosis moment that she needed to give her the determination to become the goddess she truly was. Honestly, I think this is a movie that you have to watch at least twice. Now, before we go deeper into the movie, I want to sidestep a bit and talk about what we term as ego. Hopefully, I can bring this back around and make sense of it all by the end of this episode. Ego is something that there are numerous definitions for, and I feel that every teacher who has ever taught on the subject has a slightly different interpretation of what ego actually is. Now, one teacher I listened to recently described the unconscious mind the same way as I think about ego. Maybe there should be some sort of global symposium for all teachers where we can come up with some agreed upon definitions for all of these terms. Anyway, a very basic definition of everyday use of the word ego is that it has to do with a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. The psychoanalytical use of ego is that it's the part of the mind that mediates between the conscious and the unconscious. It tests what reality is and it's responsible for your sense of personal identity. Many teachers and thinkers and philosophers all seem to believe that the ego should be crushed or gotten rid of entirely. Eckhart Tolle has said that the ego may not exist at all someday, and Alan Watts says that it already doesn't exist, so why are you bothering to try to get rid of it? Confused? Yeah, this can be a real head warper. <laughs> now, I'm not a psychoanalyst, and I'm pretty new at wearing the teacher's shoes, but here's my definition of ego. The ego can't be gotten rid of, and it certainly shouldn't be crushed. It's a protection device. It stands between the real internal you and the outside world. If the ego is messed with too much, or if it breaks, then we have what is called psychosis. I guess that's where I disagree with most of the other teachers on the subject and with Eckhart Tolle too. So do I think Alan Watts is also wrong? Does the ego exist? 
Now, honestly, it really depends on what your definition of ego is, but it doesn't technically exist. Alan Watts was correct. If you go back and listen to my Terminator 2 analysis, you'll see that I believe that the ego is essentially a computer program, and a computer program technically doesn't exist. A computer's operating system is just a giant mathematical equation that allows us to use input devices such as keyboards and mice and touchscreens and other th such things to communicate with and manipulate the computer's hardware. The operating system or subsequent programs that you run, they translate the input signals into machine code, which is just a series of on-off switches represented by ones and zeros. And then these ones and zeros tell the computer's hardware what it should be doing at any given moment. The computer hardware could be likened to the components that make up your body, for instance. The point I'm trying to make here is that the computer's operating system or the program doesn't technically exist. It's all just equations and ones and zeros, and that is how our ego works as well. We really are organic computers. We have internal natural programming and drives that maintain our physical bodies. Input from the outside world further programs us to let us know how we should operate within our societies. This is why as we get older, we become less and less open to change because those changes hack away at the programming of youth and we automatically fight those hacking attempts. We put our firewalls to maximum. And this is why I'm such a proponent of creating that internal change within yourself, hacking your program from within. Don't let the outside world program you to be a mindless automaton. And this is also why I believe that your ego should absolutely not be crushed or gotten rid of nor why it's never just going to go away. It's just te technically doesn't exist. It can't be gotten rid of, but it can be damaged. Remember, I said that it's a program. It's a protection device. I believe an ego should be healthy and strong and well-maintained. Can you imagine what it would be like if your ego wasn't there at all or had a severe glitch in it? Well, actually, yes, I can imagine what that would be like. I think I actually lived that way for many years of my life. And I believe that we have a large percentage of millennials that are living exactly this way as well. And yes, I'm talking about the ones that we regularly and rudely refer to as snowflakes. That, my dear listeners, is a generation of people living with a lack of ego, or at least extremely weak egos, lack of a sense of self and lack of a sense of purpose. The outside world breaks through their poorly programmed egos and attacks their inner self directly. There's no buffer zone there. There's nothing to protect those deep inner emotions. There is also nothing to protect the outside world from that inner self. So everything that is felt or thought inside comes rushing up to the outside. Okay, I'm rambling a lot about ego and I'm not giving you any clues as to how this relates to the Netflix film, Io. Io. It fits, but, you know, let's go around another path and I'll come back to it. Overall, Io is asking a number of exploratory questions and the deepest of them is, what makes us human? And the film explores this and other questions through mythology. Now, in fact, this movie very blatantly tells us that it is mythology and that it is also creating the mythology of the fictional world within the film. All right, so let's get into the hero's journey aspects of Io so we can look at the deeper meaning of the movie. And I'll do my best to stitch all my ideas and concepts thus far together. And this will be my last warning about the spoilers. From here on, there be dragons. Now, as I already mentioned, the movie pretty much plays out as a potential tragedy. Sam's hero's journey isn't apparent because everything and everyone, even her mentor, is telling her that she needs to leave Earth so she won't be alone. But once you understand that Sam's hero's journey absolutely is to stay on Earth, it becomes clear that we are mostly seeing her on her road of trials. She's already committed to the journey. Sam's call to adventure was to stay on Earth even though most people were leaving. Her supernatural aid was her own father, but like many mentors of good heroes, he has died, and it's up to Sam to continue her work on her own. I have to assume that her first threshold moment and Billy of the Whale time was while her father was sick and when he died. He was actually telling her to give up the work and leave Earth, not because he had lost faith, but because he didn't want his only child to be alone. But Sam is determined to finish her work and figure out a way for humans to continue living on Earth. Sam has a very strong and well-programmed ego. Ha 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 I knew I'd get that in here somewhere. She hasn't let the outside world program her ego. Sam is listening to that deep inner voice, her true voice, and has programmed her ego from the inside. Sam knows what her purpose is. She absolutely knows what it is she's supposed to do, and she is determined to do it, and she is strong enough to stand on her own. 
Sam also knows that it is not her job to go out preaching and attempting to convince others to stay on Earth as well. She leaves that to her father by playing an old radio broadcast of his every night. Unfortunately, and I think almost all of us can relate to Sam here, it seems like the odds are stacked against her. In true Road of Trials fashion, a massive storm wrecks a large portion of her work and research, and it turns out that the last shuttles between Earth and Io are prepping for one final launch, and they won't be coming back. Up to this point, Sam has always had an out. She has had options. She's had time to do her work and put off leaving Earth. But now it looks like those options are coming to a close. Ah, but then Micah, played by Anthony Mackie, shows up and Sam is finally meeting with the goddess, or the god in this case. If you go to my Meeting with the Goddess Hero's Journey episode, I talk about how this stage of the hero's journey is about meeting with your other half. In this case, Sam, the goddess, meets Micah, the god. Micah's name quite literally means, who is like Yahweh, or who is like God? Given how convoluted the Hebrew language actually is, we could remove the question mark from the phrase and say that Micah's name means one who is like God. So mythologically speaking, Micah is Zeus coming down out of the heavens to be the lover of Io, or Leda, depending which one you want to refer to Sam as. Io makes more sense in regards to the movie's title, and the idea of Sam's offspring being as strong as Hercules, but the movie makes more references to Leda, who is also one of Zeus's conquests. Now, one other option that Sam has always had is Elon. This is her lover or boyfriend who is currently living on the space station. And I think Sam believes one of three things will happen between her and Elon. One, that Elon will come to Earth and stay with her out of sheer love for her. Two, that she will go to Io and convince Elon to go back to Earth with her. Or three, she will go and be with Elon for a short time and come back to Earth pregnant and continue her work. Again, in typical hero's journey fashion, Temptation now rears its head and tears these options away from Sam when Elon informs her that he has volunteered and been selected for a deep space mission to Alpha Centauri. With all of her options torn away, much of her work destroyed and facing a life completely alone, it's really no wonder that Sam just says, okay, when Micah essentially tells her that he's going to force her to go to the last shuttle launch with him. I can imagine how easy it would have been for Sam to give up entirely at this point. How easy it would have been for her to just give in to nihilism and believe that all of her work was for nothing. But like I said, Sam has a strong and properly programmed ego. She may have some moments where she feels like giving up, but that bullheaded determination within her will always find a way to turn things to her advantage. Which she does while the winds are unfavorable to take Micah's balloon in the right direction. And then, as fortune would have it, the launch location is abruptly changed. These changes give Sam the time she needs to decide what she's going to do. And step one is betting Micah and allowing the god to impregnate the Virgin Queen. Again, this is the perfect conjoining of the masculine and feminine, but I think it's also Sam's atonement with the father moment. Her desire to stay on Earth holds the most power over her. I think all along that Sam believed she could be Mother Eve to a new generation of human beings that could live in Earth's toxic atmosphere. As viewers, we don't know this yet for certain, and perhaps it's not fully clear to Sam either. I think this is why she has this compelling need within her to see the mythology display at the Museum of History in the city she scavenges for supplies in. She's never been to the museum because it's further into the zone than she's ever gone before. Do you see the symbolism here? We have truth and understanding and knowledge within ourselves, but we have to constantly dig it out, and there's always places within ourselves that we haven't gone into yet, because they're further than we've ever gone before. Once we go into them, we can't go back, and we can't unknow what we've learned. I think Sam knows when she sees the mythology display that it will forever change her. It's her apotheosis moment, and this turns out to be the truth. It's here where she decides to take the biggest leap of faith of all. It's practically another first threshold moment, but it's really the attainment of the ultimate boon. Sam removes her breathing apparatus and her helmet, and the screen goes black. Dead or alive, she's determined to stay on Earth. Micah leaves her the same way he arrived. God ascends back up to heavens. We don't see most of the return stages of the Sam's hero's journey on screen, but we do see that Sam has become master of two worlds. She can live in the toxic atmosphere. She has survived, and she has thrived. And she's not alone. 
Her child, the Christ child, Hercules of old, son of a god and goddess, joins her on the beach where she stands while she encourages Micah and others on Io to come and be true human beings with her on the planet where they were born. And this is what all the spiritual teachers are trying to tell you. Come and live with us in this strange new world. It's actually the same world you've always lived in, but it's deeper and wider and darker and brighter and more confusing and more amazing than the surface existence you've been living all this time. And there we have it, dear listeners, my interpretation of this deeply moving and very profound sci-fi drama, Io. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts on my interpretation of the film, and I'd love to hear your views as well. You can comment below or send me a direct message or an email if you prefer a more private conversation. I have been your host, Mark. This has been a look at the deeper meaning of... <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's what I'm calling the series from now on. This has been a look at the deeper meaning of the 2019 Netflix film, Io. And I know that if you build your ego strong, are determined in your mission, and are willing to dive deep within yourself, that you absolutely will change yourself and become the mother of God's children who will ultimately change your world. I will see you on the next episode of Think Spiritual Podcasts.